Okay, folks, now let's actually dive into the insertion sort algorithm itself, right? So let's take an array A, okay, just for simplicity, okay? Of course, first we'll understand the intuition before we dive into the code, because understanding the intuition is much more important. Because if once you know the intuition, once you know how insertion sort works, writing code is just a simple extension to it, right? So I'll take a simple example. Imagine I have a an array of values, six, five, three, Okay, three, one, uh, eight, seven, two, and four. Okay, this is my unsorted array, right? This is my unsorted array. Now let's assume I want to sort this. Okay, now let's let's understand the intuition behind insertion start step by step. Then we'll see a nice animation so that you'll always remember it, right? First, I'll explain it to you as if I'm explaining it to you on a blackboard or a whiteboard. Okay. Now let's go step by step. First thing that I'll do here is, look at this first element, okay? This element is just six. Let's not touch it. Let's start from the second element. Let's pick up this element five, right? Now, when I, when I say I want to sort it, by default, it means ascending order. The default order for all sorting is ascending order, if not mentioned otherwise. If it is clearly stated, yes, sort it in descending order, that's a different thing. If, I, if you don't say anything, it means ascending order. Now let's look at just, let's take the second element here, which is five. Now this five is smaller than six. So in the final sorted array, if you think about it, in the final sorted array, this element five or key five should be on the left hand side of six, right? Because we want the array to be in ascending order, right? In the final array, imagine in the sorted array, this five should be, it, it should be like this, right? In the final array, this five should be on the left side of six, not on the right side in the final sorted array. So let's, let's, let's do it this way. Okay. Because, because we understand this property. Now we compare five with six. Okay. So we are comparing. So we have taken the second element. This is the first element, second element, third element, fourth element, fifth element, sixth, seventh, eighth. Of course, in some programming languages like C or Java, you might call this as a zeroth element, first element, second element, third element, etc. I'll just keep it simple. Okay. Let's call this the first element because it's much more easy to think about instead of thinking about it as the zeroth element, right? So now let's take the five, which is the second element. So I start with the second element. I compare it with the first element here. First thing you'll notice is that five should be on this side and six should be on this side. So first thing is I'll push. So I'll take five into some variable. Let's call that variable as K. Okay. I'll first copy five into a variable five into a variable K. Okay. I'll keep this here. Now I look at six. Now first thing that I'll notice is that five should be on the left side of six. So I'll move six to the right. Okay, so what will I do? I'll move six to the right here. I'm not touching the rest of the array. If you notice, I'm not touching the rest of the array. The rest of the array is as is. I have not touched it at all. Okay, let's just put a comma here. Okay, instead of drawing these boxes, I'm just placing a comma. So the rest of the array, this part, I'm not touching it at all. I've just placed the second element in a variable called k, right? I've compared this k with six. I notice that six is larger, which means six should be pushed to the right. So I move six to the right. There is no more element here. There is nothing else here. So I place five here, right? So my second element is taken care of. This is my first iteration, right? First thing you have to notice here is the moment I've finished this, this sub array, I have two sub arrays, right? This is a sub array that I've already processed. This is a sub array that I've not touched. By sub array, I mean a conce uh, a set, uh, a subset of the array, which is sequential, right? This whole part, if you look at this, this is one sub array. This is one sub array. Okay. So this sub array already looks sorted. If you notice here, this five and six, they're in the sorted order. This whole thing, which I've not yet touched, this sub array is not yet in the sorted order, right? So let's, let's draw these boxes so that it becomes clearer for you. Okay. I'll just draw these boxes. Okay. So five, six, three, one, eight, seven, two, four. So this sub array right now looks sorted. This sub array, only this part, this rest of this part, rest of this part, we haven't touched it yet. Okay. So we have processed the second element. Very good. Now let's go to the third element. 
okay now when i go to the third element what will i do okay now let's take of course i'll change my k now my k becomes 3 because i'm looking at the third element here i'm looking at this element now i will say look at this 3 3 is what i'm copying into a variable called k now i'll compare this 3 with 6 3 should be on the left side of 6 okay because 3 should be on the left side of 6 let's push 6 to the right okay so we'll get 6 here the rest of the sub array i'm not touching 1 8 7 2 4 i'm not touching this sub array i'm not at all touching this okay so because 3 is less than 6 i push 6 to the right okay i've copied this 3 here so even if i override this 3 that's okay because i've stored this 3 in a variable called k right this 6 is gone to the right now let's take the next element so this 6 is processed now what about 5 5 is also greater than 3 so we should push 5 also so we push 5 also to the right now what is left only 3 is left there is no more there are no more elements to the left of it right so we place the value 3 here now if you notice because we have processed the third element now look at this in the first iteration we processed the second element in the second iteration we processed the third element because we have processed the third element if you notice carefully this sub array till the third element is already sorted this is in the perfect sorted order 3 less than equal to 5 less than equal to 6 while this sub array is still not touched we haven't yet touched it right fair enough so we have processed the third element and by the time we process the third element the first three elements in the array are perfectly sorted right so let's let's go to the next step okay i'll just erase this i'll just erase this so that we can see the whole story going on here itself now this is the array that i have let me just draw a box around it okay so first element second element third element fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth now let's take the fourth element because we've already processed the second element and the third element now let's go to the fourth element okay so when i go to the fourth element let me change the colors here when i go to the fourth element okay i'll store the fourth element in a variable k so k equals to one now now this one is less than six which means six should be pushed to the right okay we will not touch this sub array the sub array will just keep it as is eight seven two four we will just keep this sub array as is let's not touch it the rest of the sub array till the fourth element will play around with it now k equals to one is what i'm comparing everything against now six is greater than one so six should get pushed to the right right so six will come here now six is already taken care of next element is five now compare our k with five right k is less than five so push k push five also to the right so i've pushed five to the right next take the next element so this is processed next element three right compare k with three k is less than three so push k sorry push three to the right so i've pushed three to the right no more elements to be compared with nothing else here there is nothing else here so i paste one at this place now if you again notice these first four elements are now in the sorted order these rest we haven't yet touched them we haven't yet touched the next four elements okay next k becomes eight the next element right because you have processed the second see we have processed the second element here and reached here we have processed the third element and reached here then we have processed the fourth element and reached here now let's process the fifth element now if you think intuitively look at this i keep my k equals to eight now whatever value so six now let's look at this six right we know that this sub array is already sorted if you notice that's how we are that's how we are constructing it right now i compare eight with six eight is greater than six which means i need not push my six to the right i can keep everything as is because i know that this array is already sorted i already know that this element is the largest element so by comparing eight with six because eight is larger than six i don't have to compare eight with five three one now i don't have to compare my k with the third element second element and first element because my k whatever value that i have in k is greater than the fourth element itself 
So I don't even compare. So the moment I realize that 8 is greater than or k, my value whatever I have in k is greater than this element, I stop there. I leave it as is. No more moving to the right. No more swapping, no more moving to the right. So my, my array at the end of the fifth iteration will look like this. 1, 3, 5, 6, 8. These are all sorted. My 7, 2, 4 are not sorted. So this subarray is now sorted. This subarray is not sorted. Right? Now, so first five elements are sorted now. Now let's go to the sixth element. Okay, let's go to the sixth element, which is 7 now. So my k, now my k becomes 7. Now I compare 7 with 8 because that's what I have, right? In my key. In my key, I have 7. I compare my k or key with, with 8 here. Okay. 8 is greater, which means 8 should move to the right. Right. So now what do I have? I have 1, 3, 5, 6. I haven't touched this. I have something empty here. I have 8 here. I have 8, 2, 4. My k is still here. So I've comp I've moved this to the right. All right. Now I compare my k with 6. My k is greater than 6, which means 6 need not move to the right. Because whatever I have in k is larger than or equal to 6. Right? So I don't have to move it. Because this is smaller than or equal to k, I don't have to test with the rest of these elements. Because I know that they are already in sorted order till here. Right? So I will insert my 7 here. Now what happened? The elements still here are sorted and these are unsorted. Now I'll take k equals to 2. I'll compare k. Now, now k becomes 2. I'll compare this with 8. k is less than 8. k is less than 7. So this thing gets pushed. 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 Thing gets pushed. Sorry, this thing gets pushed. Till here it stops. Now what happens to my sorted array? I would get, again, let me just write here, okay? I would get 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 4, right? Now, this is my sorted subarray. This is my unsorted subarray. Now, again, k becomes 4. I start comparing k with this. 8 is greater, so it should move to the right. 7 is greater, so it should move to the right. 5 is greater, so it should move to the right. 3 is less than equal to. So 3 need not worry about it. Right? So what will happen now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. Is there 6 somewhere? I think I missed the 6 somewhere, right? Okay, there should be 6 here, sorry. There should be a 6 here, I'm sorry. 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? So if you look at it, what are we doing here? At any iteration, look at this iteration, for example. We have a sorted intuitively. Now let's try to think about this intuitively because that will build the build the muscle, build the build our intuition. So we have a sorted sub array. We have the next element in the array that we take. Now we try to insert this into the sorted sub array in the appropriate location. Right? Even here, look at look at what's happening. This is a sorted sub array. We have a sorted sub array, right? This whole thing is a sorted sub array. I take the next value in the array. Now I try to insert this into the sorted sub array at the appropriate location by moving all elements greater than that to the right. That is why the name insertion sort. Because at every iteration, you're picking up the first element in the unsorted array and you're inserting it in the appropriate location in the sorted array. That's why it's called the insertion sort. Okay, I hope this flow is simple. I'll show you some very nice animation. Okay, so if you go to wiki, the if you go to the Wikipedia article, say I'm on the Wikipedia article for insertion sort. Again, Wikipedia is a phenomenal source. I mean, I I I learn a lot of new things from Wikipedia. In addition to all the textbooks, Wikipedia is the world's best resource to learn data structures and algorithms. Right? I'm on the Wikipedia page for insertion sort. Right? If you go slightly down. There is a section called algorithm where there is this nice animation. I've actually taken this example. Look at this. This is already sorted. This is unsorted array. I start with first element. First element stays the same. Next, I go to the second element here. I keep the second element in a variable 5 because 6 is greater. I pushed it to the right, placed 5. Next element is 3. 
right i keep 3 in a in a variable 6 is greater 5 is greater 3 comes here next is 1 1 i keep it in a variable k then 6 is greater so 6 goes to the right 5 is greater goes to the right 3 is greater goes to the right 1 comes here next comes 8 8 becomes the key but 8 is greater than 6 so so if you notice at any point this whole thing is sorted right again it's moving quickly so this whole thing is sorted this is the unsorted part i take the first element in the unsorted part keep it in a variable keep moving these things and place this in the appropriate location so this will also move and two will come here right so this animation is one of the best visualizations i know or i have come across for insertion sort so at any point if you are in doubt just go to the wikipedia article look at this animation you will recall what insertion sort is right very very simple algorithm and i strongly recommend if any one of you comes across good animations or good resources like this please put them in the comment section of this video so that other students and instructors and mentors can also benefit right of course i i'm not the best guy who can pick the best resources i'm sure students can pick up some brilliant resources like this right now let's go to a slightly more practical thing okay so this is a so what again as you might already know i use uh, google image search a lot right so what i type here is i type cards insertion sort on google images this is google image search right so one of the one of the stuff that i get here is this nice nice photograph of a person holding a pack of cards or a small set of cards and this is from the emory university in the math and computer science department right now if you notice when you're sorting a pack of cards suppose i have the eighth element if you look at this this is my sorted sub array okay let me change the colors here this is my sorted sub array i the next element that i want to insert i will insert it i'll try to insert the next element into the place where it should belong to right so this the reason the name insert insertion sort is because this is equivalent to taking a set of cards and inserting the right card see when when you sort a uh, when you sort a bunch of cards that you have right you come from left to right you pick a card you insert it at the right position like for example 8 is being inserted here between 7 and k because that's where it should belong to right where this is my sorted sub array this is already my sorted sub array right this whole thing is my sorted sub array including k including k this is my sorted sub array let let's let's assume in my unsorted sub array let's assume the next element is 8 so i pick up the card 8 and place it exactly where it should belong so i'm picking up a card from the unsorted area or unsorted sub array and i'm inserting it the word insert is important i'm inserting it in the right location so next time when you're sorting a pack of cards like this you should remember about insertion sort what you're actually doing when you're trying to insert each of these cards into their appropriate locations is you're performing insertion sort without even knowing the name insertion sort right so whenever you pick a pack of cards remember what you're doing is insertion sort right very very simple concept nothing fancy this is one of the simplest sorting algorithms trust me extremely simple extremely easy to understand in a nutshell you have a sorted array oh by the way there is a small interesting twist i wanted to mention at the start what's happening you have only one element which is sorted rest everything is your unsorted array at the first iteration at the very first iteration you have only one array which, only one element which is sorted rest everything is unsorted that's why you're picking the second element which is the first element in the unsorted array obviously if you have only one element right if you have an array with only one element it is trivially sorted because there is nothing else to sort right so at the start of all the iterations this is important at the start of all the iterations only your first item in the array is sorted rest everything is unsorted trivially now you take each of these elements or you take the first element in the unsorted array try to place it in the sorted sub array this becomes clearer as we go forward but what happens at the start the first element is a trivially unsorted array right because if you have an array with only one element it's obviously sorted right so the next element in the unsorted array let's assume this whole thing is the unsorted array the next element in the unsorted array we will try to insert into this sorted part that's how that's how this insertion sort works intuitively 